Hi, I'm Greg Perkins with Oak Ridge Bellows. If you've ever been down in the LP turbine, you may recognize this. Yes, it's a steam extraction ex metal expansion joint. And we're going to talk about how to inspect these things and some recommendations on, on when you replace those, what you should do. On inspecting, first thing you may notice is you almost can inspect these things. They've got fixed covers. These things aren't coming off. In fact, you might not even know that this is an expansion joint or there's a bellows in here were it not for this little gap uh, in here and you might be able to shine a light and you might see some convolutions up in there. That's how you know you've got an expansion joint in there. What do you do? If you're down in the LP turbine, you're doing a little spelunking in there, you got your headlight on, how do you inspect these things? Well, let me tell you, here's what we recommend. We've got something we call, this is our friend, we call this a boroscope. Yeah. You know a boroscope, you've got one. I'm sure uh, all power plants got somebody in the inspection group that's got a boroscope. If you want one with an articulating head on it, you can go in here and you can go right through that gap that's in there and you can you can kind of work your way around, you can inspect the bellows, you can see that you got any if you got any cracks in there. And you're doing this all you're balancing yourself on a pipe course. You got your uh, uh, your safety equipment on and you are you are properly tied off somewhere. Uh, that might be a little bit difficult. It's something you got a lot of these things to get to. You know what we've done uh, in the past where we we're trying to reverse engineer some parts for some power companies. And not only do we go in and we try to look in there and we try to try to see what we've got, but there's a good way to get a convolution count on the bellows, and that's always very helpful. You kind of put a uh, put as much of a 90 degree bend as you can on this bore scale. You sail it all the way in there. You want to make sure you get it all the way to the end. Go all the way to the end. You want to turn it, and you start bringing it down. Yeah, we're going to bump it up and down against the convolutions. We're going to do that for, for a count. Yes, we're doing this with a boroscope. Here we go. We're starting with the first one. We know that we're not going to hear a thunk on that one. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14. And that's what the drawing shows. It shows 14 convolutions on that. Yeah, we just did a convolution count. And take, we've gone in and take, taken measurements here. We, we generally know how far apart the convolutions start from here. We get an outside dimension. We can revert, reverse engineer that. We know the pressure. We know the temperature. Even if we don't know the movements, we can back into the movements based on what an, an expansion uh, bellows of that configuration would take. So that's, that's uh, going into the LP turbine. It's a dark place, and that's taking a look around. And that's what you can do. So you come to the decision that you're going to replace some of these. And, and let me just say this. A lot of the, if, if these things are, you've never replaced these things in 25 years or longer, it's time to replace these things. You'll have cracks. You'll be losing BTUs uh, because, you're, you, because of uh, lack of turbine efficiency. If you're lose, if you've got leaks in these things, and uh, and if you've got an outage that's coming up, and you're pulling the hood, and you know it's probably going to be a while before you get that hood pulled again. And these things are 25 years old. It's time to replace them. Hey, they've had a good run. Uh, or uh, you may have uh, you may have a modified hatch. You know you see these dinky hatches. You can barely fit through those things. And some of those uh, uh, some of those LP turbine hoods. They'll have modified hatches, and you can actually uh, put a single expansion joint work its way through there. If you got one of those, good for you. Uh, you had a little bit of forethought on that. Okay, so you come to the decision to replace some of these or all of these expansion joints. What do you want to do? Uh, well, <clears throat> you want to go back in with a heavier cover if this was, was if these are original 25 or 30 years old because a lot of those, what we've seen, had covers that were really on the thin side. And I'm talking 16th of an inch, uh, 16 gauge. We've seen missing covers when we get down to the LP turbine. We've seen cracks all over these things. Minimum an eighth of an inch thick. 3 16 quarter inch, if you can do, uh, uh, is, is not bad at all. And, and inside, a uh, liner on the inside, heavy covers on the outside. That's going to protect that bellows from, from resonating like, against that high flow. And that's the uh, the only catastrophic type of failure, one of the few catastrophic failures on a bellows. You get sometimes uh, people tell me they get down in those LP turbines and there's a mess in there because the cover got dislodged 
it wasn't thick enough, and short order that bellows will, will succumb to that high flow and vibrate, and just vibrate itself to death. So you want to go back in with heavy covers on this. Now, these original ones, they were all, they were all stainless steel. A lot of people will say, hey, I want to upgrade to Inconel 625. You know what? Inconel 625 is a great material. If you want to do that and pay the extra money, go ahead. Uh, uh, I, would, I would encourage you to do that. If you want to be able to go in here and test a bellows to know that you've got some sound integrity, then you might want to go with the two-ply testable bellows. And we've got, we'll have got we put an external port here. So you, when you're inside there, you just hook up to that port, put a little pressure in there, read a gauge. Hey, yeah, you're holding pressure. And uh, well, I'll have more to say uh, in some of the articles on, on testing two-ply uh, testable and also some of the videos. So you want to look those up to make sure you don't go too high in the pressure. But that's another way of checking those. You may say to yourself, hey, I've, I've got stainless steel bellows. They gave me a good run for 25 or more years. And I want to go back in with exactly what I had before. You know what? It's hard to fault that logic. And if that's what you want to do, and you got, you've got you proven you've gotten 25 years out of it, and you're not going to really make any dramatic changes, then hey, go ahead and do that. But if you want to entertain uh, just some extra costs on a two-ply testable, either in stainless steel or an Inconel bellows or an Inconel uh, two-ply testable, then go ahead and get some pricing on that. That, that may not be uh, too much out of your ballpark, and those are certainly good options to have. In fact, you, you uh, nuke plant guys, uh, you tend to go that way because, hey, you uh, you want to you really want to be make sure that you don't have any problems. Coal-fired plants. A lot of those guys say, hey, 25 years, I'm good. I'm good with that. Anyway, those are that's what you need to know about steam extraction expansion joints. If you want to know more about metal expansion joints, join us at www.oakridgebellows.com.